Hello, uh, we're looking at some data from a uh, physiology practical here where we've recorded blood pressure, heart rate, oxygen saturation and respiratory flow and volume and some end tidal gases. Uh, this is one of the standard incremental exercise protocols uh, we do in most physiology practicals. And this tutorial is aiming to look at the spirometry data, the flow and the volume, which you can see here are in the pink and the blue channel. And this is the raw data loaded up into lab chart 7 uh, which has this spirometry module installed and lab chart 7 reader for PC can have the spirometry module installed but the Mac version, the reader version cannot. Um, so I'm just going to expand these two channels so we can look at them on the screen and interrogate the data a little bit more. You'll notice when you load it up if the data is recorded and saved on a PC and then loaded on a Mac for instance or vice versa you may lose the calibration uh, information and on the top here you can see we have flow but it's reported in voltage and underneath you can see we've got volume but the volume is also recorded in voltage and it appears to be zero across the board that's because the volume channel is actually a calculated channel from the flow data and the flow data needs to be in the right format for the volume data to be shown so um, the easiest thing to do is use the spirometry pod uh, if you install the spirometry plugin uh, you should see spirometry appear in your menu bar at the top here and if you drop down one of these lists on the right hand side you should also see spirometry or spiro dot flow and volume it's part of the function of this plugin this module so the first thing we need to do in the flow channel is choose the drop down box and choose spiro flow and just press OK um, you can select the drift correction here that's quite a useful thing to have because these pods do drift away from the baseline sometimes so click on drift correction and press OK and you'll see your data moves around a little tiny bit in the volume channel again drop down list here and choose spiro volume uh, and just click the default settings on the screen and make sure that the spiro flow channel is listed as the spiro flow channel at the top and press OK and you should see immediately there are some uh, wiggly lines appearing which represent volume. Um, we've got some annotations on our file right at the very beginning here we've got a, a flow calibration and a little bit further on we've got a syringe 3 litre syringe calibration so what you need to do now is zoom in on the 3 litre syringe calibration let's find that there we are and select one of the syringe plunges. It's best to select one of the positive deflections because that gives you a better volume calibration. So just select one of these like I've done on the screen, choose the drop down box and choose spiro flow again and this time the calibrate button will be black and you can click on it. So click on the calibrate button and the injected volume should be 3.0 litres. Press OK and then press OK again. Nothing's changed but you should see now that this has um, been calibrated. Uh, underneath here you should now be able to see some volume lines and one thing you'll notice with this trace is there is a very subtle drift on the volume. Uh, so if I look across look at some of the recorded data here's some uh, breathing in the actual experiment you'll notice the same slight problem here we have volume going up on every breath but unfortunately the integration isn't working very well if you click down and choose Spiro volume, unfortunately there are no options on this plugin to change uh, drift and to try and um, accommodate these changes. Uh, so you just have to press OK. The reason you're seeing these changes, if you look on the trace above, is the zero line, which should be in the center, isn't in the center. In fact, here you can see we're deflected by around one liter per second, which means the computer thinks that this subject was always inhaling uh, despite the fact obviously there are exhalatory phases as well but this isn't working so although our flow is fully calibrated and you can use these data as differential flow from peak to trough here to work out what the difference in flow rates are the volume isn't properly integrated so now we can do this ourselves we can drop down this drop down box and choose integral the integral we want to choose a source from flow, we want a positive only integral and we want to reset the integration on each cycle. Uh, you might as well just choose one decimal place and then click OK. OK, so now if we zoom out a little bit and have a look at our data, there we are. Once the subject has started breathing, 
nice and steadily, we can see that our data are nicely integrated. And you can see an increase in respiratory, respiratory volume as the load of this incremental exercise increases. So that's a way of getting around some of the inherent problems with these spirometry pods. Um, you could, of course, be slightly clever about it, and you could do an arithmetic channel and try and delete some of this baseline drift off the flow channel. But if you look at the data over time, you'll notice there is other drift going on. So the simplest way of doing this is to do manual integration, as shown in the bottom here. So this uh, tutorial is complementary to the other tutorials we've got on the site, which look at spirometry, and I hope this helps.